Hello! Today's Monday. <coughs> I've got a croaky voice. Still not right. It's another week. Uh, still not 100%. Lingering on. I'm better, but not 100%. So anyway, we're going across the forest. Forty mile an hour limit. And we're off to Hive. Only half an hour away. Twenty minutes. Twenty five minutes. So we've only just left home. Uh, so the journey takes us through a bit of Brockenhurst and then through Bewley, and then up to uh, Dibden and then uh, Dibden Purlieu and then out to Hive. And um, we've got something different on board today. Pallets. Pallets, pallets, pallets. Everywhere I go there's pallets. <clears throat> and I do mean everywhere. And they're free. And I like free. So, not a change of tact, but another string to the boat. Um, I don't know, I, had a, uh, I suppose there's a little bit of a story behind this. Many, many years ago, when I had a, a fireplace, like a proper fireplace, and um, I used to look for wood to burn, and I used to collect pallets in my van, and I used to chop them up and stick them on my fire. <clears throat> and it was a free way of heating my house. Probably not the best way, um, pallet wood. But yeah, most of it is absolutely okay. As long as they're not painted, they're good to go. And uh, yeah, there's no problems with them at all. Despite what people say about them being treated with whatever chemical it is. Well, yeah, to kill all the bugs and everything for export or import. Um, it's not an issue doesn't affect you in any way shape or form if you were back in the container when they spray all that shit all over everything or fumigate it then yeah that that do you in but over a period of a few days it dissipates it does the job and then dissipates so yeah it's the way the world is so anyway <clears throat> pallets um, collect pallets on me round and I managed to <laughs> within a very short space of time i.e. like less than an hour I more or less managed to fill the van up with pallets now, I didn't do that just on the off chance in my research of like, I was like well what can I do with the pallets where can I do them and there's several things that I can do and there's several things I have done in the past I have made pallet furniture I've made planters I've made bird houses um, insect houses boxes, crates, all sorts of different things. And I've also used it for firewood. Um, there are places around that actually buy pallets, but they're few and far between. I found one bloke about 20, 20 mile away and the other bloke about 30, 40 mile away. <coughs> and that is just, well, uh, doesn't really work for me. No, I'm not going to be buying them, but I did find someone over in Hive that buys them for firewood. Uh, and his words for me were, words to me were, I'll take as many as you can get your hands on. So, we're going to go and have a little chat for the day to see exactly how many he actually requires. Now, I know from past experience of burning pallets from our fire, that you can go through a, a, an amazing amount of pallets. Rapidly. So I think I've got 25 pallets on, and that would probably, if you were there all day wanting to feed your log burner, that would probably do you the day. Oh, the traffic at Brockenest. That'd probably do you for the day. <clears throat> and I'm 
Uh, he's paying a pound a pallet. He's happy to pay a pound a pallet. So, we'll see when we get there. We'll have a chat, see what he wants, see how he wants to do it. And, like I said, I can fill the van up with pallets nearly every other day, if I so wished. And I probably, if they were stacked properly, I could probably get 50 to 60 pallets in there per day, if they were stacked properly, which is on there, flat on the back, and then layer them up. <coughs> Can I get down there? Can I get down there? Uh, no. It's that time of day, isn't it? Ooh, I might be. If they all scrunch up, I might be able to get round there. Go on. Up a bit further. Scrunch up. Get round here. This is the way I'm going, down Mill Lane. <clears throat> down to the pig. Turn right. Oh, the pig's right in the forest. Panage. Apparently. It's where they go around eating all the acorns so the horses don't. Because the horses, although they can eat a bit of acorn, <clears throat> it, is, it does become, I don't know if it's poisonous, but it doesn't do them a great deal of good. Whereas the pigs, they like to, they like to snuffle them up. No problem with them. We saw uh, yesterday, we saw a mum, and she must have had about eight to ten piglets with her. I'd say piglets, they were they were a good size. But her mother was monster, she was a monster. She was a big old girl. <coughs> <coughs> See, I'm still not right. I don't know if you see any deer this morning. We're on deer, deer alert at the moment, going through here. So yeah, we're going down to see if we can get some, uh, we're going to go down and see this guy. See what he says about pallets. And if he does, it's a nice useful, you know, I could, I could get another extra uh, 50 to 100 quid a week from doing this by recycling. You know, these pallets, I, I spoke to, I, I picked up a few over the weekend. I was just out and about doing what we normally do, went shopping and um, picked something up and uh, on the way I just said oh we're just driving this industrial estate and there were two, two places and they had some propped up against the wall and they were in and I said hey Charles I could grab your, oh please do, please please take them, take as many as you want and I've had that everywhere I've been so far where I've gone can I take your pallets and as there's been about four or five places they've gone oh Get yeah, shot, take as many as you want, mate. Excellent. Because they've got to get rid of them. They, they, struggle, to put, they struggle to put them in the bins because their bins are too, you know, they're too, um, they're too big to put in a bin. So they just hope someone will come along and um, have them away. And often they don't, and they've got a few, a few poles. So watch out for this. <clears throat> It's a good, good place to spot them going along here. So the gorgeous Kira will find out today whether she's going to Portugal or not. Her best mate. <clears throat> um, has been having like back problems. You know, pins and needles, getting headaches and all the rest of it. And um, she eventually ended up going for an MRI scan and they they discovered that her um, spine is crumbling and it's in it's actually um, almost to the point of collapsing. So she's been told she can't do any, you know, she's got to take it really steady with like bumps and jolts and things like that because it could paralyse her from the neck down. It's like oh, a bit drastic. So she's got to have like a titanium cage built around her spine <coughs> um, to protect her spinal cord. Yeah. So flying to Portugal may not be the best idea in the next couple of weeks because she's supposed to be going in for the op in the next two to three weeks. 
so we'll see what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. I see no deer. Might find a bear, never know. I haven't seen any bears for a while. We took Boy Wonder back to uni yesterday. But this is a good spot for deer. Keep an eye out. Either side of the road. And probably deep in the fire. Too many cars around now. The motorbikes like that. They ain't gonna be hanging around with that sort of noise, are they? Not when they got the noise the tranquility of the forest half a mile away you wouldn't hear nothing if you get deep into it which is over to my left Oh dear today, dear oh dear, oh dear, dearie me. Well, you see some honey out there. So we had all that heavy forest there, and then we go out to uh, open, open, uh, open heathland. There's an old airfield over to me, right? Old issues, World War II. <clears throat> 40 mile an hour stretch, all the way through the forest, 40 mile an hour. If you look carefully, about 11 o'clock, you can see the uh, the towers of the uh, falling refinery. Looks a bit like Mad Max when you get a bit closer. <coughs> Favourite place to get the old uh, boys in blue down here, Nabinia. Loons speeding along, nice straight road, trying to rip, trying to break world speed records. And of course there's a 40 mile an hour limit. You can't see it, but if I look to me right, I can see the Isle of Wight. Ugh. So when we when we've um, there's black horses. I think I might start making a bit of pallet furniture wood crates, things like that, just stuff, simple sort of stuff. <clears throat> Very easy and simple to make, cut the lengths, cut the wood the length, screw them on, easy as.
So I'm just coming into beauty now. Oh, we've got a cow coming towards us. Watch out. You don't want to be hitting one of these in the dark. <coughs> oh, wander across the road there, Gertrude. I don't think her eyesight was brilliant. Where there's one, there's normally a few others, unless they she's the last one in the line. She might be at a scouting party. Not doing a quick recce. We're all creatures of habit, these forest animals. They go from one place to another to another. Donkeys. What do you call a group of donkeys? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six all good sized donkeys. Pretty for here. Look over to my left, there's a bit of water. Look in there now. Oh, yeah, just about to see it. This is Beauty the Village. Oh, someone's hit that telegraph pole. How yeah, they managed to do that? All owned Buddy Estate, Beauty Estate. Never been in there, Montague Arms. Besides that, this side, this is the uh, seaside. No, not the sea, as in the side where the sea comes in, and there's a sluice gate back there. Yeah. Obviously, got it shut because the mill pond's all right, but the um, tide is out now. much you can see of that, probably nothing at all. There's nowhere to stop, let sort of swing you around either. Going out to dinner tonight. Kira is uh, president of the uh, Swaptimus branch and it's their 85th anniversary tonight. So uh, we're having a meal. Just Kira has to wear her uh, chain of honor, chain of, I don't know, like a mayor's chain. Is 
up here, look. Loads of them. coming so let's uh, give them a bit of room there we go all right got a nice little run in the morning run out of hive go around to london yesterday Roehampton to be precise which is where he's at where boy wonders at uni Run up the A3 because that was the sort of quickest way, and then we had to go and drop up. I sold a tow bar online, um, detachable tow bar for a Range Rover, and um, it's taken a little while to sell. In fact, it's taken months of like him and Aaron. And uh, the bloke who, who wanted it, well, there's been two or three, but none of them could get nobody could get their acne, could never tie up because they're all dotted all over the UK. And there's one bloke said, Look. He says, I'm down in Southampton on Sunday. Um, any chance I could uh, meet, pop across and meet? Up? I said, that'd be brilliant. I said, that'd be, under normal circumstances, would be brilliant, but I'm taking our lab back to uni. And he said, he gave me his, but he said, I don't suppose you're driving, jokingly, he said, no, no chance of you driving past here, are you? He gave me the postcode. So I looked at it and I had to drive by, it was about three mile away from, off, the, off the road. I was on the A3 up in London. I said, look, <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this, but actually I'm, I've got a drop, you know, I'm dropping them off at Rowan, he didn't know Rowan. He, he didn't know that I was going to Rowan. I didn't say where I was going, I just said I was dropping them off at uni. He says, oh, you're not going past this postcode. So I had a look and I went, you're not gonna believe this, but I bloody well am. I said, you're gonna be in? He says, no, I'm gonna be in Southampton, but my dad will be. I'll put around to this address and he'll give me the cash. I thought, I'll take a punt. I'll do it. So loaded it into the car. It's not big. It's only a little, little calf. Load it into the car, and um, we, after we dropped Boy Wonder off, um, we went down to his house, and uh, yeah, he was the old man was there. It was fine, absolutely fine. Paid me. Yeah, no problem at all. Easy. So uh, yeah, we eventually it took a little bit of perseverance. Cause we got, Mucked around earlier, well done for signalling, school bus, Ashley Infant School. Well done, big shout out to them for no signalling. Supposed to be a professional bus driver. Oh, that's me signalling too early. Supposed to be a professional driver myself. Well, not anymore, I'm a white van man. Well, I haven't been down here for a while, we should do a bus route all that through it. I don't even know what time it is, quarter past eight. Mile to go. <clears throat> we looked at we at one point we did look at buying a house in life. Quite liked it. But it's bloody expensive. Thinks he's going. We're going this way. 
Right, as I'm practically here, I'll speak to you all on the way out. I'll speak to you later. I'll let you know how I'll get on. Hello. Uh, yeah, just dropped the pallets off. He was happy with them. He's uh, going to give me a shout when he needs some more. Not as many as I thought I was going to get, but if I see any, I'll grab them. Um, and I've always got a stack. I can stack them up in the garage, so that's all right. <coughs> And uh, yeah, no, that was alright. He was a, not, a lot younger than I thought. Am I going the way in? Oh, where are we going? And um, yeah, he's a, a lot younger than I thought. He's probably in his late 20s. And uh, he's from up north, and his missus is from Portsmouth. And uh, he works in the finance industry in London. And during the pandemic, they, um, as as many people did, they all started working from home. And he's continued to work from home, and his company's cool with him working from home. So you know, think, and. Uh, they decided to move down to the forest to get out of London because it's cost them a bloody fortune. So, so uh, they've got a better quality of life and they've got a whooping great wood burner, which is why he needs the pallets. I said, how many pallets do you get through during the winter? And he said, oh, last winter we only had it sort of <coughs> towards the end of the winter. I was going through about one a day. I thought, one a day? Christ, I used to get... I'm trying to, I was trying to remember, because I used to... I used to crack a few pallets in one hit and fill up a, um, like, a, like the big uh, Tesco's cages or the supermarket cages when they bring the goods out from back and put it on the shelves, all of those big cages. I used to have two of those and I used to fill them up and then wheel them into the, uh, we had a sort of, out, not out building, but into the, uh, into, it's like a utility room I suppose with a porch on it. I used to put them in there, put them in there, finish drying them out before they went on to the uh, fire. Oh, look at this weather. Oh, lovely. Seen a windscreen. Bugger, bugger. Oh, this is a pain in the arse. Mm, okay, I'm here. Let's just go down the road here. Yeah, it's a Tesco's. Go down and get some fuel now.
horses are nice. Yeah, nice lad. Nice lad. Going in here to the left now. So I'll speak to you all a little bit later on. Speak to you later. Hello! For those of you who remember that have followed me in back in my trucking days. M27 Westbound So we're going down to uh, Pool now Oh it's miles away Yeah <coughs> It's the other side of my patch well, It's a heavy old washing machine and then I'm going to my mate's garage to pick up some stuff. Called in a bike shop on uh, Saturday morning and uh, got about seven or eight kilos of chain and oh, it might be a bit more, well, I should weigh it really. Uh, chain and sprockets and pedals and bits and pieces like that. So not much to see along here, apart from watching my wipers. I might put you on as I go through the uh, scenic -y bit. I'll drop my speed down, keep it at 55. Nice and steady. Anyone who wants to overtake can overtake. I'm in no rush. I say easy day to day, really. I'm just picking up this uh, washing machine. Go to the garage, see what they got. I've got an alloy, alloy wheel with, um, with a tyre on it, so I'm hoping it's got his tyre machine working because we couldn't get to it last time. So I'm hoping his tyre machine's working and we can get this tyre off. He'll take the tyre off me for a couple of quid and we go from there. I've got some big ass alloy wheels to pick up from him as well. I think I might be buying some new tools. <laughs> I want a circular saw. I've got a tool budget. I have a, I've got a tool, pot, a pot of money for tools. Um, that was uh, due to wherever we go, likely to be Scotland, um, is to buy the tools that I need for you. Uh, tools that I need. So, uh, I might just bring that forward a bit. I need a, I need a saw. I'll, just, I'll make a bit of pallet furniture. So I'll make some uh, wood crates. It's that time of year. Pretty easy to make. So yeah, I think I'll do that. So we 
going up to the nice part of the forest now. More uh, rainy weather. Time now is 9.28. So we'll see what little treasures we find today. I might, <clears throat> once I've picked up this washing machine, even put on the chest cap. Once I've been to the garage, and then we'll have a trawl around and see what we can find. As I drive back through. We're just doing a quick run down, because I know that the bloke's moving out today and he wants rid, so... Uh, stone after King Rufus I think is where he is supposed to have been killed shot in a hunting accident although I believe it was less of an accident he happened to be the wrong end of an arrow see much across the forest today. So I hope everyone's alright. I'm just about getting there. on a bit of metal on uh, I don't know, Thursday or Friday. One deep for anything, and it didn't bleed a lot, but it was bloody sore. So, I am thinking about now the weather's getting a bit cooler as a boiler suit. I don't know. I don't really want it, because I like wearing shorts. I'm a short sort of person, you know? I wore, I wore shorts last year during the winter, minus 13 doing a trailer change. I was still in my shorts. I dug myself and another guy out in on solid packed ice in a yard in my shorts. Whilst it was snowing. Still in my shorts. I'm a short sort of person, you know. I've got to protect my legs. So far, I mean, I've had loads of cuts and scratches, and so far, nothing's gone septic, and I've not um, cut an artery or a vein open. But it could quite easily happen. Not that I've got a lot of varicose veins, but I can see a couple. You don't really want to be doing that, do you? You don't. Want to, you, don't. No, you just don't want to be doing that. a bit more in a minute, there's a lot of trees around it. But it's only either side of the road, the rest of it is uh, the, other, the other side of these trees, it's all open, um, open land.
Well, it looks like we're going through Bournemouth anyway. Yeah. Okay, that's alright. See what we can find on the way through. Brighten up over here, look. Getting brighter. The sky's looking brighter. We had some thunder and lightning last night. Oh, and I had some weird dreams. Oh my word. I woke up with a start last night. I thought someone was banging on the door. Got up the gorgeous kids. Go, what are you doing? Is that someone at the door? So I looked out the bedroom window. I could see him right down to my front door. Nobody there. I realised I must have been dreaming. Definitely looking brighter over the walls of Bournemouth, right? Always sunny in Bournemouth. You never get a wet day in Bournemouth. <coughs> What's your name? Fucking Pinocchio. See too much along here. But you've had a nice run out. Talking of running out, I'm running out of coffee. Windscreen, anyway. games of it all. I'll speak to you all a little later on. <laughs> 